we've retreated back down the valley. And as soon as I did that, of course, I had grenades flying at me. One of them uh, hit me on the shoulder and bounced off. And the next one came sizzling underneath my feet. So I just stepped over it and put my head down so that if it exploded, it would only hit me, you know, in the backside. So I raced down the hill. And uh, by the time I got down to the bottom of the valley, I started to climb the other. I was pecked. I was... I can't stand this any longer. The battle was ferocious. There was awful losses, awful losses of the battalion. And by the time the, the, the dark had come and things had quietened down, the, it had been decimated, decimated. There was only about been 50 and 60 British people left in the battalion. And that was the end of the war, as far as I was concerned, as far as the battalion was concerned. George Wheeler, lucky to escape summary execution after capture, was now a prisoner of war. Sol Frankel, badly wounded in the Ebro battles, was slowly recovering in hospital. Jack Jones, seriously injured on Hill 481, was sent home to Britain for medical treatment. John Dunlop was also in hospital, convalescing from illness and minor injuries sustained in the last action. Alan Williams and able volunteers from all the international brigades gathered in Barcelona for a farewell parade. You know, we were more or less in rags. Uh, all I had was Spanish sapatos on my feet. People in Barcelona gave us a fantastic welcome, fantastic welcome. You know, there was really, it was, a, it, was a, it was a great day, one of the best days in Spain for me, to say that they'd appreciate it, they had appreciated us for what we had done or tried to do, but we failed. Chamberlain and Dahlia sold the pass. The word was no pass around and Chamberlain sold the pass to World War II and the bloody Holocaust and et al. Yeah, we failed. But the parade of Barcelona was, as far as I was concerned, it was a triumphant parade. We were put on this train to go up to the, the uh, French frontier. From then on, we transferred to a French train one place we stopped at for some time, and the whole platform was lined by French policemen with weapons on them. And uh, we were leaning out of the train, and I, watched, I saw one, one French policeman pulling his hand out of his pocket with his, with his fist clenched, just as a show. He was in, uh, he was in sympathy with us. At the end of 1938, the British arrived home to an emotional welcome at Victoria Station in London. Oh, Victoria was a marvellous experience. Um, they were, uh, the populace were there and uh, we got a tremendous reception of Victoria. I had my front page in the Daily Express. One of the few that the camera caught. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the first my mother knew I was home when she saw the Daily Express, my photograph on the paper. And uh, yes, there was a great welcome by all the anti-fascism, all the sympathisers at, at Victoria Station. And we had a, a reception, a bit of a meal. And the next day, I was put on a train back home to my mother. Simple as that. At the beginning of 1939, Barcelona capitulated. Within months, the nationalists entered Madrid. To be honest with you, I don't think the uh, Republican army had enough strength to withstand the forces that, that Franco had assembled with the backing of Germany and Italy. I think the, the will of the Spanish people, the will of the Spanish soldiers, as well as the International Brigade, was good, but it was fighting against terrific odds. 
and in, in poverty. By poverty, I mean shortage of food as well as shortage of arms. You know, people weren't strong enough really to, to withstand, uh, withstand uh, long periods of, of attack. Looking back at you know, my whole life, one of the proudest moments of my life was to be with these fellas in Spain. I mean, these were all total volunteers. Every man Jack was a volunteer. I understand that uh, there's been a memorial discovered hidden in the undergrowth for, since, the, since the war. And to me, it's a great thing that somebody has discovered it and looked after it and remembered it. Being a piece completely unique, the minimum that could be done was to conserve it, tanto for the monument that it is, as the memory of those who are written and of the people who were fighting in the zone. Monument is a great idea, a great, great thing. Posterity should know of all those that died. The names on it, I recognise the names, but I don't know the people except one, which is Harry Dobson. And that's important to me. I'm glad that Harry, at least, of all the people I knew and, and don't know where they're buried, there is some sign of Harry anyway. Well, I'm very pleased that it has been found. Uh, I think it's marvellous that it has survived all these years without being discovered by the fascists, because otherwise it would have been destroyed. Que cuando decimos ideales, ideales es defender la libertad, la justicia social, pero también es acordarse en momentos tan difíciles como es el fragor de la batalla, acordarse de los compañeros caídos que homenajea este monolito. There was men there, you classify them different. There was students, there were intellectuals, laborers, anarchists. They were all there, and ordinary men like me, and we were in the majority. Going to Spain was the right thing to do. It was continuing the anti-fascist struggle. Very brave people. I mean, the, the, the audacity, the, the bravery of so many in the International Brigade it was very considerable and it, it meant that many very very good people who would have been leaders in their different walks of life were killed at quite an early age both from Ireland and from Britain and of course in the other countries as well I mean but, uh, I think it was justified from the point of view of establishing a principle of internationalism but the price was very heavy Indeed. Jack Jones returned home to Liverpool. In the Second World War, he worked in a reserved occupation. In peacetime, he went on to lead Britain's biggest trade union, the Transport and General Workers. He is 88. George Wheeler spent eight months in a nationalist concentration camp. In the Second World War, he served in the British Army. Afterwards, he came home to London and resumed work as a wood machinist. He is 87. Sol Frankel's badly damaged arm prevented further military service. In the Second World War, he worked full-time as an air raid warden in London. After the war, he returned to work in the clothing trade. He is 87. Alan Williams served in the Royal Air Force in the Second World War. Returning to South Wales, he worked in the car industry. He is 88. John Dunlop served in the British Army in the Second World War. At home in post-war Edinburgh, he built up his own printing business. He is 87. Somos la quinta brigada, trumbar, trumbar, trumbar. Somos la quinta brigada, trumbar, trumbar, trumbar. Que se ha cubierto de gloria, ay Manuela, ay Manuela. Que se ha cubierto de gloria, ay Manuela, ay Manuela.